Hey, what's up YouTube? What's going on? We're back with a new video today. We're gonna to be talking about what the research says about lumbar disc herniations and the return to play and professional baseball players. So we're gonna go over what the career longevity is and also performance measurements compared to pre-injury and post-injury for professional baseball players. Now, before we jump into today's research study and article and talking about this, I just want to mention that I posted a new article on my website uh, discussing mattresses for people with low back pain and how to think about selecting the proper mattress for you, whether it's a stiff mattress, soft mattress, what is the best for you. So I recommend you guys go check out that article if you are unsure about the best type of mattress for your back pain. I think you guys will find it very informative. But other than that, let's jump into today's, to today's video and we're going to be talking about lumbar disc herniations and professional baseball players. So the title of this research study here is The Effects of Lumbar Disc Herniation on the Careers of Professional Baseball Players. Now, in this study, what they did was they looked at 64 MLB players who had 69, there was a total of 69 disc herniations, and this was between 1980 and 2009. Now, 40 of these disc herniations were treated surgically with either a microdiscectomy, a laminotomy, or a foraminotomy. 29 were non-surgical or conservative treatment. 40 of these disc herniations were in hitters, and 29 were in pitchers. And they collected this data through newspapers, injury reports, articles, and press releases. And we have to keep in mind too that the, the, the major league, major league baseball, the season is 162 games. It's the longest season in any of the major sports. So when you consider the pitching motions, there's a lot of twisting involved. And when we also consider hitting, there's very high torque forces as well in terms of the twisting. So there's a lot of repetitive stress being placed onto these athletes over time. And that could lead to changes to the lumbar spine and problems can arise over time. So what they looked at was, or what they defined as a successful return to play was at least one game played after overcoming their disc herniation. And they looked at pre their pre-injury performance, so before their disc herniation, compared it to one year and three years post-injury or recovery. And we'll kind of get into the statistics shortly and what the results say. But the performance measures that they measured now in pitchers was they looked at total wins, earned run average, ERA, saves, in innings pitch, strikeouts, and walks plus hits divided by innings pitch. And then they looked at the, the performance variables they looked in hitters was runs, home runs, runs batted in, RBI, stolen bases, and batting averages. And so what they found was that there was a 97% return to play. So only two hitters didn't return to play and one was treated surgically and one was treated non-surgically. So remember they defined as returning to play as successful as one game return. So there were just two players. And what they found, and this is a, a very important factor and, and statistic here, was that the average game average games played in non-surgical cases, pitchers or hitters, was 432.4 games after overcoming their disc herniation non-surgically through conservative treatment. Whereas compared to the surgical cases, the average games played was 232.8 games in surgical cases and pitchers and hitters. Now that is a significant difference, is about, about half there. So, and if we break that down a little bit further, the average recovery for these players, so on average, it was 3.6 months in non-surgical cases. So that's how much time it took roughly for them to return back to play after sustaining the lumbar disc herniation and being diagnosed with it. And about 8.7 months in surgical cases. And then there was no differences in terms of, if we break down position, pitchers, there was no significant difference in terms of their average return to play if it was non-surgical or surgical, but hitters, there was a significant difference. Hitters, it was 9.4 months on average and they're non, and sorry, in the surgical cases, 9.4 months and 2.6 months in non-surgical cases and hitters. So significant differences between that position specifically. 
So right there, we see that there's a huge difference in terms of just the average game played in terms of the longevity, whether it was non-surgical or surgical, with the non-surgical having much more favorable outcomes. But now let's get into performance measurements and variables. So if we look at pitchers, and if we look at the pre-injury performance compared to one in three years, there was no significant differences in terms of wins, saves, innings pitched or strikeouts for either the non-operative or the operative group. Those four variables, no differences between those two groups, non-operative or operative group. In terms of the non-operative group, there was no differences in earns or earned run average ERAs or walks plus hits divided by innings pitched. So all of six variables for non-operative pitchers that returned to play, there was no significant differences in performance from the pre-injury and one in three years post. But when we look at the operative, there was significant differences in earned run average ERA and walks plus hits divided by innings pitch. There was a significant decrease in those two performance variables at one and three years. And then when we look at the hitters, there was no significant differences in performance variables for non-operative and operative in home runs, stolen, uh, stolen bases, and batting average for non-operative or operative groups. But when we look, when we look at the op, or sorry, the non-operative, there was there was no significant differences in runs or RBIs either. So they had no change in performance at one or three years. All performance measurements were in the same ballpark between the pre-injury and one and three years. But when we look at the operative, there was a significant decrease in runs and RBIs at one year only, and then returned to kind of normal at three years. So there was just a significant decrease at one year at runs and RBIs. So what we're looking here is that when we look at this information and the results here, there is much more favorable outcomes in non-operative cases for pitchers and hitters. The operative cases, we had a significant decrease in the longevity games played and also for specific performance variables in pitchers and hitters. And you may be asking why. Why is surgery, you know, a uh, non, not as favorable, uh, and then there could be a few re few reasons. And one of the the reasons the author speculated is that there, there there's a could be could have been a change in the, the paraspinal musculature activation patterns after um, the surgery. Now let's keep in mind too. I want to just keep in mind one thing that I forgot I left out is that spinal fusion cases were excluded from the study. So we're just looking at microdiscectomies, laminotomy, or foraminotomy. But you know there there could have been the the paraspinal muscle activation pattern changes after surgery, which the authors uh, you know speculate, and that could maybe change the way that the spine stabilizes and can and, and can tolerate force, especially when you're doing those 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 motions, a lot of those twistings and those high torque motions. But it, it, you, we also have to keep in mind the time period too. I think 1980 to 2009. I don't think the research was. I would say the research definitely wasn't as good as it is today in terms of spine hygiene and a lot of things that. Stuart McGill teaches that was not, you know, mainstream and whatnot. So you have to keep in mind what we don't know what their training was like. We don't know what their, their spinal hygiene and their practices were um, when they sustained these injuries and what they did afterwards when they, when they did return to play. So th those are a couple of variables to consider as well. But we also have to keep in mind this is professional baseball too. You know, the season is very long. There's a lot of repetitive stress on these players. And because of those surgery cases, there could be some, you know, some changes there that, you know, something just didn't go right or, or there could have been some, some changes that were permanent that put some limitations and restrictions on these players. So overall though, the results from the study are very interesting because we have a specific study looking at what the longevity and performance is after sustaining a lumbar disc herniation in professional baseball players. So we know that professional baseball players can successfully return and the success rate was 97% return to play. And in, in non-operative cases, you know, the, the career length was, 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 was much better than the surgical cases and there was no changes in performance. Now in the operative cases or surgical cases, yes, there was a, a significant decrease in their longevity and a few variables or performance variables were affected. So uh, I think the overall results from this study and the takeaway is that, you know, it, it supports why surgical or surgery is not 
the is typically not the best option to go with. I'm not saying it's it's always the case of context specific, but majority, high majority of cases, you know, can get better and do better with conservative approach because when you're opening someone's back up and, and going under the knife like that, you just never know what can happen and what things are going to be long term and if there's going to be future problems that may arise. And you know, this study provides us insight into into what you know a, a non-surgical and surgical case looks like for a professional baseball player. So I think anyone that is watching this video that you know just has an interest in professional sports, but specifically maybe in the sport of baseball, you know, you will find this information probably uh, educational and, and inf informative for yourself, but also probably I'd say encouraging. With uh, you know, if you're thinking about what you know a lumbar disc herniation may have on your baseball career. And, and it, what it may have in terms of a non-surgical or surgical route. So we know that you can su successfully return. There's the evidence here and uh, the research here to support that. So um, overall, encouraging to, to, to see this, I would say, especially um, that high percentage of return to play and what we saw, especially with the non-surgical cases. So I uh, just wanted to put this video together and I, I hope this did provide insight to you guys for anyone that is interested in lumbar disc herniations and, and, and baseball itself and if you have any questions anything you wanted to, to discuss about this research if you have maybe some further questions you want to dive into or discuss please please leave a, a comment in the in the comment section below and i'll be happy to you know have a conversation with you about that and if you have any specifics on you know the sport of baseball itself and you know some tips that you you may or maybe looking for in terms of returning to play or anything like that i'd be happy to help you out or if you maybe just want a, a link to this this research article you know I'll, I'll put it in this description you guys can check it out for yourself if you'd like to kind of reread or read through a couple specific points yourself but other than that guys that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed this video we talked about baseball today and i, I previously have talked about hockey and basketball and also I did a video on mixed martial arts recently and i'd, I'd like to do now one on football players and if there's any other sport or something like you'd like that you'd like me to cover just please just uh put a recommendation below and i'll be happy to put that together for you okay guys so that wraps up this video today i wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day and take care